we are always blessed, no matter who we hear, uh, we always love when, uh, when our leader comes home and uh, comes to share the word. So I know he's got something special for us today, and I'm uh, going to have Pastor Bob to come and share uh, with us. Thank you, brother. Uh, that's like those two chipmunks, right? <laughs> After you and you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's always good to be in God's house. Uh, you know, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's a mandate of my life, and this is what I've been appointed for. And what a blessing when we walk in the divine destiny of what God has for us. Boy, I, I miss most of the church family. Uh, this past year has been rough for everyone uh, with this COVID. Uh, our church, as you look around, uh, we've been tossed to and fro. Uh, many have been sick. We've lost a lot of members. And uh, um, as I said, uh, we were fortunate to go see our grandchildren. And, but I got home yesterday. I come home the tragedy. Uh, my brother called me and said that his daughter was... Uh, taken to the hospital for COVID, and um, by five o'clock yesterday, she passed away. And uh, you're only in her four years old. And uh, it's a heartbreak. And, uh, my heart goes out to uh, my family uh, for the loss. And, um, but I do know that we have a better hope in Christ. And uh, you know, Bob said it, and then with John, with our song, it's, it's keeping our focus uh, on the Lord and I didn't uh, just put this message together yesterday afternoon uh, this is what was on my heart this past week and I titled the message weathering the storm and uh, it's just very appropriate for uh, the time and the season that we're in and uh, there's there's three points that you're going to take notes and to look at that what I thought were appropriate with one don't lean on your own understanding. And two, is get rid of the clutter in our lives. And three, is to focus on our divine destiny. And uh, where I've taken this passage is from the book of Acts in chapter 27. And the Apostle Paul was taken uh, to Rome by ship. And this was part of God's divine destiny for him. And they incurred a great northeastern storm. Uh, how did each one of you weather the northeastern last week? <laughs> I, I believe that's what it was. I, I know that Texas and the Midwest are still uh, they're reeling from the aftermarks of all that's going on and uh, uh, storms uh, just come upon you quickly, don't they? Uh, we left South Carolina uh, Friday and uh, the, it was barreling down with rain. I couldn't even see past the, you know, one car length ahead of me because the storms were still raging, you know, just after um, what was transpired. Um, so storms come quickly, uh, and all of us endure them. You know, they affect us in, in many ways. And uh, so I want us to look at the passage of Scripture this morning and draw from that uh, that God is sovereign, uh, he is in control of our weather also. Uh, you know, there's times where there are those who say, well, I, you know, it's just inclement weather. Well, God is sovereign over all things, you see. Uh, so we have to recognize as we trust him through not only the storms and the weather, but the storms of life. Because they come in many pictures. They're not just outside weather with the sun not shining, but they may come in health issues, they may come in financial issues, they may come in tragedies uh, of losing loved ones. And they are the storms that, uh, that we faced as Christians. Uh, Jesus told us that we were not going to uh, be alleviated from them. He said, in this world you will have trouble and you will have tribulation. Uh, it is how we go through the storm, and that's why the points that I'm going to give you today is how we get through the storm of life, or storms, plural, because there are many. Um, so let's look at the passage of Scripture. I'm going to read chapter 27 of the book of Acts. We're going to start in verse 13, 
And we're going to bring it down to verse 25, 13 through 25, and we'll come back to it. So if you're there with me, say amen. 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 Start with verse 13. When the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their desire, putting out the sea, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, a tempestuous headwind off arose called the Eurycladon. So when the ship was caught and it could not head into the wind, we let it drive, or let her drive. And running under the shelter of an island called Claudia, we secured the skiff with difficulty. When they had taken it aboard, they used cables to undergird the ship for fearing least that it should run aground on Sartus sand. They struck sail, and so we were driven. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Now, when the, neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest beating on us, all hope that we sh would be saved were finally given up. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God of whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all of those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as he told me. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. For we know you're true. We know your word is true. And we know that it is accurate. And I pray, God, that you would give us the discernment, the wisdom. I pray, Lord, as we expound and expand uh, and explore your word, Father, that it would touch our hearts, touch our minds, and redirect our paths. And Lord, we will give you thanks and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul was on board this ship heading for Rome. There was 276 people on this ship. The sailors there, they were uh, seasoned seasmen. They were seasoned at sailing uh, the Mediterranean. They knew these waters. And yet Paul said to them, you know, we should weather there in the island of Crete uh, and not go on continuing to uh, Rome because the weather seems to be getting bad and we should stay the winter. Normally, uh, ships would anchor at that time of the season, sometime uh, late October and into November. They would go ahead and, and dock through the winter. Uh, but they thought that, well, we, we'll get to uh, another place and we'll weather, weather there on the other side of Crete. If you notice in verse 13, it says, When the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their desire. So they put out to sea and they sailed close by Crete. I don't know about you, but I think at times in life when we think we got what we want, uh, we, we, we tend to huddle in there and we make motion to move along uh, in the direction that we believe uh, is the right direction. And every aspect of life, I think back, uh, my wife and I, back in 2006, when uh, we were uh, doing land development, and uh, we thought that we obtained what we needed to obtain in the land development that would bring about and uh, uh, a good wage for us that would keep us sailing for say uh, 
Uh, but just at the end of 2006, we all know there was a financial storm, you see. And, and what I'm saying is I was leaning really on my own understanding. I was leaning on wisdom that others might have been given me. Uh, if you look back at this, they were seasoned sailors. And Paul said, look, I can see our, our uh, you know, our tour here is going to be a disaster and uh, we should just hold back but it says that the centurion didn't listen to Paul he listened to the ship's captain and to the owner and isn't that some ways that uh, we don't listen to the man of God or we don't listen to the word of God but we listen to all the counselors uh, that have hollow and deceptive philosophies you know how many times that I have uh, dealt with those who have been bound over with addictions, that have been bound over with uh, life-controlling problems, or those who have come to me uh, with marital problems. And the counsel that they get from the secular realm uh, is, is opposite of what you would get from God. Uh, I've gotten uh, people saying bizarre things at times, you know, if their relationship wasn't going well intimately, that maybe they should watch pornography, you know, and, and I'm like, you know, this is bizarre, but this comes from secular counselors, you see, and, and the world at times follows those ways, but they're disastrous, you know, it leads right to the storms of life, if you see the point I'm trying to make, the first point is, we don't lean on our own understanding. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. And then He, if we acknowledge Him in all of our ways, He'll make our path straight. He'll bring us to uh, our desired havens when we trust in the Lord. Now, <clears throat> think about how some of the decisions that we've made. We've all made wrong decisions that sent us right into the headway of a storm. Anyone? Anyone who could think about some of the things that brought you uh, in the wrong decision. Now, God is merciful to us, as we'll see. He, uh, even when we make wrong decisions, God is with us. He, he promises to be with us. Thank God for that. Uh, but do you think that sometimes uh, we should stop before we punt and uh, rely on the wisdom of God for in this case, it was the man of God that said, don't go forward. Uh, just because it looked like we've had, how did it work in verse 13? Look at that with me. It says, when the south wind blew softly, supposingly that they had obtained their desire. You know, how many times we think that things are going right. But it, it, normally, uh, it's always kind of calm before the storm. Right? Always calm before storms. And we're all going to face the storms of life. You know? So the first point would be that we don't lean on our own understanding. Uh, nothing wrong with taking, listening to counsel from others. Nothing wrong with hearing all the experts. But friend, when I come back, I'm coming back to the Word of God. That's, that's where I'm standing. Because there is a way that seems right unto man, but in the end it leads to death and it leads to destruction. So, where does our counselor come from? Isn't the Holy Spirit called who? Comforter, counselor. Amen. So, nothing wrong with uh, measuring up certain things, but ultimately we want to heed. Uh, to the Lord God, and uh, our wisdom will come from Him, not lean on our own. So, as we look at this, the storm came, and it says in verse 15, uh, so when the ship was caught and could not head into the wind, we led her dry. Now, I thought about that for a minute. Uh, they were fighting the storm, weren't they? They let her, they just let go and let the storm take it. Okay? Uh, matter of fact, they started to throw cables underneath the, because the storm was raging so bad that the ship was starting to come apart. And they have a term for that. It's, uh, I had looked it up. I think it's called fracking. 
where they put cables on there to hold the ship together because it's taken such a beating from the Euroclot, we call it the Northeastern, but that, that didn't come into play until the 1500s, um, called the Northeastern. But the Euroclot, this was a, 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 one of the you know, worst storms to be in. And so they, they put cables try to hold, hold it together. I, I think of, you know, our spiritual lives at times, we try to wrap things up and try to hold things all together in our own strength, uh, and things just come apart, don't they? You know? Uh, our visions, our hopes, and, and when we let God drive us, okay, we're going to be in, in the right direction, you know? And, and sometimes we're fighting a headway into the storm, and, and we just we're against the grain. We're going against the grain of whatever it might be. And, and the Lord, uh, at times in the midst of this, wants to turn us. Anyone ever had any uh, revelation in life that when you were going in one direction, and all of a sudden said, man, I, I'm really going in the wrong way. And I think that's God's great love sometimes when he sends sense storms and, and and we really we really don't get to the place of walking with the Lord until we allow the Lord drive us. You see, you you've heard the uh, the term uh, you know uh, God's in the in the, the driver's seat, right? Because he really is. You know, no matter, no matter what you think, if you think you're holding on to that wheel, sometimes you fight that wheel, don't you? No, Lord, I won't, I won't go. I won't go this way. I won't go this way. He has a divine destiny for us, the best thing. So we don't lean on our own understanding. So when God comes into the midst of things, he kind of rattles us, doesn't he? The storms rattle us and get us uh, start to think. And here's what happened uh, in verse Well, I'm going to read 17 because I just spoke about that. When they had taken it on board, they were talking about the lifeboat. Uh, and they used cables uh, to go ahead and wrap around the ship. And then they took the, the, the lifeboat on board. And now verse 18 says this. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. The next day, they lighten the ship. Because why? Sometimes we carry an extra load, don't we? Sometimes we are cluttered and weighed down by certain things that we can't see clearly. We can't weather storms when we're cluttered, can we? Yeah. I, you know, my wife left. I can talk with you. <laughs> I'm a pack rat sometimes. <laughs> You know, I, I go into my closet, I keep shoes, like, forever, you know. I, I always have this, well, I'll use them to mow the grass, or I'll use them to work on the car, and, but I got about 10 of them, you know, and they're in the closet like this, and they're, they're old, and they're, you know, the heels are falling off, and, but I just can't get rid of them, but I can't see my good shoes sometimes because of all the clutter on them. And sometimes our lives are so cluttered that we can't see the good stuff that we have because of all the clutter. And, and you, you have to throw the, the things out. And, and, and biblically, the Bible speaks to us about clearing those things out and seeking God first and foremost, as we just looked at. And uh, knowing that I don't know, in some ways it's a hoarding sense. If we trust the Lord, if we know that he will take care of what we eat and drink and what we wear, he says, why do you run after those things? Why do you keep so many things in some ways? Uh, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All those other things will be added unto you as well. Those things will come when they are needed. Aren't we like that pack rats? I'm going to need that one day. Does that day ever come? Come on now. You know, as Americans, uh, we, we have all these stored bins. You know, I know so many people that pay uh, enormous amounts of money to keep 
stuff that they should have thrown out years ago. You know, and they got this 80 or $90. I know you guys are smiling, because some of you do. <laughs> My mother-in-law, she has traveled back and forth to California with this old furniture uh, two or three times. And I think she spent like, uh, I hope she doesn't watch it. But you know, it was a lot of money to take the furniture there and take it back. Now it's in storage again. And, uh, and clutter, get rid of the clutter, things that, that hold us uh, back from, you know, walking fully in the counsel of the Lord. When the storms come, we see what's important, though. The ship's coming apart, friends. You know, things are, things are shaking, racking, and rolling in our country. You know, and we need to prioritize what's important. What's important to get you know, uh, so it impacted me yesterday again. My niece at one o'clock, I'm getting ready to call and go see her at the hospital. By five o'clock, she's gone. Mm -hmm. And in four hours' time, you know, what what was important? Was it all the stuff that I accumulated or all the stuff that I have? No, the most important thing is that they know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And as a church, we need to proclamate that. Mm -hmm. We need to come back to the place, the origin of our faith, and contend for that once again, friends. Because in America, it's been underwritten. You know, and they, when we stand for biblical principles, it's almost that the world wants to say, you're, you're a bigot. But the truth is, individuals that face their mortality, and many are, they need to know Jesus because there many are dying without knowing Jesus as their Savior. And that is the heartbreak. And if I'm so bogged down with all my stuff, I'm not focused. See, it, it, what happens is we become consumed with me. I, 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 this past week, I started praying again, Lord, don't let my prayers just be selfish. Because I find myself at times that in my prayer time, Lord, about this, what am I going to do, and this. And, and the truth is, God will take care of me. And God will take care of my stuff. Let me again look at others and their needs and pray for them. There are so many. There are so many that are hurting today. There are so many that are overcome. There are so many that don't know the way. And they're taking counsel from seasoned seamen, counselors of this age, hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. And that's what we've been forewarned about. Not to take that counsel. The third point. How do we weather a storm? We keep our eye on divine destiny. Because if you're a believer, you know you have a divine destiny. God has a plan to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. How do we get through the storms of life? We don't look at the storms. Many times we look at the storm raging around us and we falter under it, one included. But if we start looking past the storm and look at our divine destiny, as the Bible talks about, to keep our eye on the prize, which is heavenward, we see that there's much more than the present circumstance. I'll use a secular term for you. This too shall pass. And it does. But at times we get so cluttered and weighed down by what we see. And right now we're facing this COVID. And, and what will be next? And, and after that, and, and the fear mongering that will drive you into ground so that you stop living your life. 
Our brother John always had the acronym for fear. A false event appearing real. Makes a lot of sense. But fear paralyzes you with something that really didn't even transpire yet. Yes, COVID real? Absolutely. I experienced it yesterday. But what's the most important thing? Keeping my focus on the divine destiny. Now, how did Paul do that? Well, we look at verse 20. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Uh, since we're moving on time here, uh, I'm going to look from 21 to 25 here. It says, but after a long time, 14 days had transpired. Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. That's verse 21. Verse 22 says this, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Did you get that? whom I belong and whom I serve. You know, God has spoken to the Apostle Paul numerous times. He met Jesus on the Damascus Road. Jesus came to him in a vision, told him that he would stay there in Corinth for another year and preach the gospel, that he had many among them there. Paul knew what his divine destiny was going to be, and here it was whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that he, or that it will be just as it was told me. That was not spoken just there on the ship on the way to Rome. When he met Jesus on the Damascus Road years prior, he was told he was going to stand before governors and before authorities and before Caesar. Therefore, he knew his divine destiny. The storms of life weren't going to stop him. All the obstacles that he faced, God was going to bring to completion the good work that he started. Regardless of what he was Endure. And you and I might have to endure some certain things. But when we focus on the end game, what is that? Where God has a place for us. God uses the storms to move us to the place where He wants us. Any of you ever read Psalm 107? Have you ever read 107? I'm going to read some of the verses from 107, verses 23 through 30. If you'd like to turn with me, it's important that we see that uh, God sets us up for the step-ups. And verse 23 says this. This is Psalm 107. It's a recapture of what we are talking about here. And I'd like to just read this and then close with it. Verse 23 says this. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of their trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men, and they are at their wit's end. Before I read the remainder of that, I'd just like to pause where it says that they stagger like drunken men. And I came across a term, anyone ever heard the term three sheets to the wind? Do you know where that term came from? You know where it came from, right? A sheet is what? what hold, a rope that holds the sail. And what happens is when the rope that holds the sail gets too much wind in it, it loses control. 
So you have three sheets to the wind, and you're out of control. What did I just say? They staggered like drunken men. When a ship is out of control, there's three sheets to the wind. So when next time you see, you're at your, you can refer back to understanding three sheets to the wind is, is something that is out of control. Um, so, in verse 27 it says, they reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men, and are at their wit's end. Um, what changes course for us in life when we're at the end of self? The prodigal, when he came unto the end of himself. When we're at wit's end, what happens? This is what happens in verse 28. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distress. Isn't that what brings us to the place of crying out to the Lord? When we're in the, the tempestuous storms of life, is a place where God is working and calling us. And when they called out to the Lord in their trouble, he brings them out of their distress. And what happens in verse 29? He calms the storm so that the waves are still. They are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to the desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works and to the children of men. Father, we thank you that even the very storms of life are bringing us to our desired aid. Father, let us recognize Lord, some of the things that would cause us to be off course. One, leaning on our understanding. Two, being overwhelmed and overbearing with our cargo and clutter. And three, missing out the focus of our divine destiny. Lord, keep us focused. The storms are raging, but Father, you are the one who says to the waves and to the winds, peace and be still. We thank you, Father, that you give us the peace that transcends all understanding. Guard each one today with that peace. Guard their hearts and minds. Bless them. Each one here, Father, loves you greatly. All those who are listening and watching by video, Father, we know the struggles that they might be having. And we stand with you and pray with you. And pray that you would apply these principles for the storms that we endure. In Jesus' name, amen.